Alright, so the types of animals that are very unknown to us outside of just like sharks, which they give you, first of all, they, I want to say they give you shark week and they give you all that crazy ass shit with whales and crazy shit like that just to hide the real shit that's going on in the ocean in my opinion. Because why the fuck do you have a shark week? That shit's stupid in my opinion. Like, there's too much. There's so many animals, like so many beings in the ocean that we only want to focus on what the big, scary looking ones. Or really, if you want to think about it, all of them look, with your perception, very out of the ordinary. But they only show you the ones that that you can see yourself or come across yourself within your normal range of the ocean pretty much i would say and while those animals are amazing themselves you don't really look outside of that but there's a lot of animals out there that are mostly living with electricity in the same way that you are flowing electricity through your body they have that and they're floating in the ocean with it you have animals like uh, electric eels, for example. You see these inside of lake waters, and you can see them inside of the ocean. And they are similar to jellyfishes in a way, but almost in a very lesser, a less um, spiritual way. Because this, the jellyfish is really, it has no eyes, it has no... It has no sign of life outside of the fact that it moves. And when you take it out of the ocean, if you if you can, then it really it just dies automatically. But the energy is still there if you touch it. And if you throw it back in the ocean, it just starts back if you, if you don't harm it. And it's almost like. There's, for instance, like, uh, I forgot the name of it, but there's a fish where literally, it literally sits in the ocean bed where uh, people live in certain places like the uh, Pacific Ocean, I mean. And once it just sits there, and if somebody walks on top of it or if a fish swims above it, then it releases this uh, poison. And, it, and that poison literally goes through it, the skin of any animal or if it if you come in contact with it in any way pretty much it literally numbs the area of your foot and usually it kills the animal but after like uh eight hours it literally eventually kills you too and this is just an example of like we we see it we see these things as poisons but really these animals are in a way further in their spiritual process because they don't really rely on so many physical materials in order to survive. They they defend themselves and you don't even know about them. You can't even barely understand them because they have these protective devices. You call them poisons or you call it like electricity or a stingray or something like that. Like, But these things are actually life forms that your body and your energy type <clears throat> just for some reason cannot defend itself against almost and that animal itself is literally built to be defend 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 uh to, to to defend itself against almost all other species but it literally has no purpose it, it sits there and waits, barely eats, eats like once or twice a month. So what what is what are these what are these beings in reality? <clears throat> these beings are the original beings that were actually on this planet. The higher frequency beings that know all, they they're, they have been here longer than all the other beings. You see? They have patience. They don't really move like trees. 
they're like the tree and you have like plants also we're not even getting into the plant life that's actually you have plant life that actually glows in the dark and communicates with each other in the ocean floor with bioluminescence they they literally have never seen the sunlight in their whole life and somehow they glow to our eyes we see that with we see that with uh certain ultra ultra violent lights and infrared lights and uh different color spectrum i mean different lights from the color spectrum and if you shine it on them you can see them literally emitting different types of radiation and only they can see it if you don't if you if you use your human eyes and if you were if you're used to all these lights that we're used to you'll be blinded by it i mean to it you won't be able to see it i mean because it'll, it'll be too dark to you but if you have different visionary skills basically then you can actually see these plant lives communicating with each other with lights if you sat down there for a month and you were able to watch that and you will be able to see that because your eyes wouldn't be destroyed with all this sunlight and all this these fake lights that lights that we use today but um <clears throat> go, moving on I want to start talking about uh, the Bermuda Triangle because I mean that's that's one of like what they call the seven wonders of the world. Tell me what you know. Like, what do you think about it, bro? Like, the seven. One thing I know about that is just once you go there, it ain't gonna come in back. Basically, well, that's the basically the mystery behind it is that it basically is like a big smoke screen. Yeah. Like a big. It's like a portal to yeah. another dimension. And honestly, that's honestly what I just think it is. A portal to another dimension? Yeah. Like, cause isn't that over, isn't that basically just over water right there too? Yeah, it's pure water mostly. Yeah. It's literally, I mean, it's, it's an illusion when we call it the Bermuda Triangle, but it's basically like, a, uh, what's it called? geometric shape that the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean, or connect. not the Indian, but Pacific and the Atlantic connect with Africa. Like, what's that shit called? You know, the slavery shit, basically? That shit. Uh, they traveled that way, almost. I never knew that, actually. Damn. Yeah, they went through that shit, almost. And they say that shit is cursed, too, from that. That's one of the rumors that I read online when I was looking that shit up. So it's cursed from the damn slave trip. I'm not slavery. sure, bro. I mean, I mean, I could. It's it's believable because we don't under, we don't understand what powers they probably had back then. Yeah, to true. do stuff like that, to control that reality. And you have to remember, they did say a lot of them did kill themselves. True. When it comes to killing themselves, it's like you leave your spirit behind. And I, I feel like there's always some type of urgent fear that they put on you of the ocean. Every like they don't even nobody barely anybody knows how to swim. Most people who do not swim. They only do it in controlled pools. They don't really do it in like natural environments. And the people who do, they only can do it to a certain extent because yeah. of li their limitation as humans. But even those people, they don't really. Well, yeah, I could say they probably have a connection to that shit. But you know, those people go surfing every day and all that yeah. shit. Like, yeah, that's what they, they they put that shit to use. But most people, most of the masses, they don't really feel connected to water. They're scared of it because they they put this urgent fear of that shit on you constantly. And the Bermuda Triangle is one of those places, like, and I just wonder, like, why are they hiding so much shit there? I don't know mm -hmm. if it's because, it's like, they have a hidden treasure there that they don't want anybody to know about. Or if it's, like... some actually like mystical shit going on because I mean in reality like I said the triangle shit is just a, an imaginary configuration we made up in our mind to draw the lines for this story of the Bermuda Triangle 
And it's like crazy shit going on. For example, my friend, quote unquote, I'm gonna call him Shy. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna say that her name is Shy. She told me about the time that she went to Florida in a Key West Point, which is a part where it's basically where the Bermuda Triangle almost starts at. They were there for a vacation and uh Basically, he said they were driving on the, on the edge of this mountain, on this cliff, basically, and they were going, like, back to their loft. Mm -hmm. It's, like, on the side of a fucking mountain, and they were mm -hmm. driving on the side, going up it. <clears throat> he would say he was driving for about an hour back home from where they had went from this, like, um, uh, you know how you go out of town? I forgot what it's called, because I barely go out of town anymore, but when you know how you go out of town, you want to go see shit, celebrate. So that's what I did, and they were on their way back home to their loft. Not home, but to where they, you know, were staying at. Yeah. Going up this mountain, he sees nothing but trees, mostly, on his right. But he knows there's, like, a, a, a ending to it, going down, you know. So out of nowhere, he just sees, like, nothing but blank space in the forest and shit go away. And it's, like, nothing but, you know, the end of the fucking highway. And it's, like, up above... Ahead, you can see that it's going to be forced again, but he's like on this. And while he's doing this, he says like in about two minutes ahead of him, and his uh periphery, I mean, not his periphery, but he's basically looking ahead on the road, and he can see like in the distance, there's this like creature, like a uh, big animal, basically, like standing up and it had to tell. So he's like driving towards it, and he's trying to, he's thinking he's tripping or some shit because he was drinking, you know, he smokes. Does a, uh, she does a couple other drugs, I mean, and he said this thing literally was on the side of the road looking down at something, and then when he seen uh, Shy coming, the thing seen Shy coming, it looked up, and it, like, walked away, and it said, she said that the, she had her uh, boyfriend went in the car with her, and he was asleep. She's driving up the road, and then out of nowhere she sees this, so she says she stops out of nowhere when she realizes it's real. And it looks up at her, walks away. And she said this thing was like seven feet tall, it had a long ass tail, and it had four arms. But the way it walked away, it walked away like it was angry, like she, like it didn't, like it had an attitude, like, oh, you're disturbing me from something. It wasn't really like scared of her or anything. So she said she literally like fucking after it like walked away, she seen she didn't see him anymore. So she said she like hurry up and fucking drove up that shit, and like she woke her boyfriend up. He she woke her boyfriend up immediately, but by the time he, she, he like completely woke up, he didn't really see that shit, and he was waking up and shit. So he was thinking like she was tripping, he was dreaming or some shit. And from that day, he didn't even he says that he don't even remember that shit. But I'm just saying from that point of view, there might be some real shit going on there, like. That's a we people the people who live there even say that shit themselves like ghosts people die out of nowhere people the the life expectancy there is like lower than it is in most places and this must be for a reason you feel me and that goes to another thing bro which is the unknown secrets of the ocean floor for real yeah because. Literally, like I said earlier, or 80%, 86% of the ocean species are un undiscovered. Now, how do they know this? Because they call this, they use the theory of relativity, basically, and they use equations to see that the ocean is this wide, the planet and the ratio of the planet is this wide, and it's this much water, which is 70%. And from what we know of so far, every space every like square feet there's like two fishes in there then we can predict how many fishes are in the ocean and how many we actually know about and from that equation they have figured out that 86 percent of their of, of the species in the uh, ocean are undiscovered and you can see that most of the undiscovered shit that they're really saying they know about but they're not really telling you about for example there's a such thing known as the great barrier reef it is the largest living structure, which is 100, 1, I mean 1,600 miles. <clears throat> it literally can be seen from outer space. This thing is literally like a big ass coral reef. It's nothing but plants and shit. 
going for 1600 miles straight okay and this is this is happening as we speak it's living there and you can't really fuck with that shit you can't hurt it you can't because it has sulfur it has volcano sulfurs at the bottom of it coming out literally like volcano like volcano eruptions are happening that shit every day almost and these these plants are still living in that atmosphere so how is this possible how do you live in the atmosphere like that not only sustain life but actually enjoy it you can see these they have they have footage of these animals actually dancing in a way you can see them like mating with each other they when the volcanoes come up they literally wait by it so because they know other fish are going to swim by that chemical they wait by it and they they're not harmed by it and when these other animals swim by it they die and they wait for it and they just come and eat it you feel me so how is it possible for us to you know limit out so many possibilities of of the truth about this mass body of water that we live on and that how we're just limited to nothing but the earth side in our minds at least even though we have blood flowing in us we have the same uh electricity and the energy force that is helping us be able to communicate and live and be conscious of our lives to survive but somehow these creatures in which we have the limits they don't have these same limits just because they live in this fucking body of water non-stop so we have to start changing our mind about water and the ocean overall we already know that water is affected by how we treat it and you know the way that the wet is surrounded by the environment it's in it's a very sensitive element and the fact that we take it for granted pretty much we just have it in sinks we just have it like flowing at our command we think this has no effect on us and also we not only that we disrespect the whole body of water by calling this whole planet um earth which is can be seen as like a male type thing but if you see that this planet is actually made of nothing but water almost and that most of the, the earth is covered up with water, and that's for a reason. That's because all this water and all the earth, okay, first of all, you have to know this. If there's nothing but a hot volcano, nothing but hotness, and you have magma, okay, that's fire, that's heat, that's energy, that's raw heat energy. You can't stop that. That's not going to just stop for nothing. So what do you have to do that? You have nothing but a big-ass mass of fucking water on top of that. And that's where you get the earth from, okay? So with that knowledge, you can understand that really the earth has nothing to do with the fucking planet itself. It's the fire and the water that's there to balance it out. The earth is just there as a side effect to help you, to help you be able to experience something. Okay? That helps the water be able to mold itself to something, to be able to flow between stuff and have fun with stuff and not just like be on top of this hotness and cooling it off and steaming and like being turned into air. So if this is the if this is the case, most of most of the planet is air, most of the planet is water, and most of the planet is uh fire actually if you if you consider the core of the fucking planet and the earth is only what a very a very minimum thing that we have on this whole planet so we st we have to start respecting the water that is here and instead of calling the planet earth we have to we have to start calling it other things maybe agua or water i don't know what the fuck like blue Something else besides fucking Earth because Earth is really like limiting you consciously, subconsciously, I mean, is making you feel like you're trapped on this 
small piece of land and a whole get in a whole everything massness. If you look at the whole universe, it's more comparable to fire and water than it is to earth. But you limit yourself by saying that you're nothing but an earth being or earth. I'm from earth. I'm living on earth or saying mother earth. Like maybe it's mother ocean. I don't know. You can't because that's disrespectful. It don't make no sense. Yeah. Earth has a lot to do with it. But it's, it's not, it's not, it's not the base. It's not the base at all. Like you're limiting yourself. You can do, you can live in the ocean. You can live in the sky too. But it will be so much easier to live in the ocean, though. Did you know that it will? You can't shoot. It's very hard to shoot somebody in the ocean. Like while you underwater. It's very hard to commit sins underwater if you ain't got the ability to flow and swim. So, from all we know in reality, I want you to think about this, bro. From all we know in reality, when you look out of the ocean, you see nothing but water, bro. And from when they show you the pictures from outer, when they say outer space, most of the time it's CGI. Even then, you see that the planet is covered in what? Mostly water. water. And they show you one half of the planet. They can only show you the image from one half of the planet, but they're not showing you the other half, which is completely shot, covered in water, too. You feel me? And at the top, they say that there's nothing but ice and frozenness and like Antarctica and the North Pole. Still water. Still fucking water. But what my question is this, bro. How do you get a North Pole? How do you get a North Pole? Is it that, how do you get a North Pole on the globe? What What's the North Pole? Excuse me, the way North America is, is fucking... Really the top, bro. The real way point. Where everyone goes pointing up to the moon, really? How's their top? I... I So you saying I go to the if I go to the certain point, very the very north point of the fucking planet, right? I feel what you mean. I, I don't. There's no north pole. Cause I don't. I don't it's, there's a ball. Wherever you are at is the fucking the north pole. Yeah. The north pole is the top. Try to stand on top of a ball, bro. That shit is hard as fuck. You keep moving. That's what I'm saying. But if it's big as fuck, you can stand on top of that shit like an ant. Everybody's like, how can ants and bugs walk on the wall? Because they're smaller than you, bro. They got more power than you. You got to realize they're taking the same amount of gravity and all that shit as you. But they still got the ability to do everything they can do. And imagine the amount of gravity that these, these uh, animals living in the ocean, they have to go against. Not only are they taking the gravity from outer space, but then on top of that, they're living in a more dense environment with this water nonstop. So, these animals have the ability to actually know what the fuck this planet is about, basically. If you are living in the ocean, you can know what the fuck the actual truth is. Everything, think about how many treasure are at the bottom of the ocean. Not only treasures, but think of all the fucking uh, minerals, petroleum oils. Like, they get all that shit from where? The fucking ocean, bruh. Yeah. The ocean floors. They don't want you to go to the ocean, that's why. Because there's truth in there, bro. From all we know, bro, there's nothing but everlasting water. And that's and we living on the earth part. But you have to realize that people back in time, they used to literally be scared to go to water. They used to think that you would have fall fall off the edge of the fucking earth eventually. Why would you think how how would somebody think that, bro? How is that possible? They couldn't read. So how would you think that? Tell them this shit. If you've been on a boat before and nobody came back, 
Would you think that they fell off the edge of the earth? No. Have you ever been on a boat before? No. Me either. Have you ever been on an airplane before? No. Me either. But basically, what I want to say is this. Getting back on topic, the edge of the fucking planet doesn't exist. There is no edge, and neither is there a top. It's a ball. It's everlasting. It's not like even a. It's not like even a, a perfect ball. It's like a crumbled up piece of paper. And it's really not there. If you, it's 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 an uh, it's an illusion. It's only there as a side effect of the core of this planet being hot as fuck, and there being water on the fucking planet to cool that shit down. Now, the moment this planet stop being hot as fuck, or the moment this planet lose all the water, you will not have no Earth. You either gonna have a hot ass ball, or nothing but fucking water. Balled up. So, with that conclusion, you have no, you have no, you have balance there with water and fire, but you have to realize that the, the amount that you can consciously realize, fire is nothing but transportation. If you can come in contact with fire, your ass gonna fucking burn and die, nigga. You're not gonna be, be able to see what the fuck going on. You're, gonna be, you're not gonna be able to consciously experience it because water, what does it do? It adapts to whatever the fuck you want it to be, but it's not gonna die. So if you inside of that, you won with it. You not you you gonna do the same thing. You could be able to flow in the ocean, see what the fuck going on at the same time. But you can't flow in magma. You feel me? So if we can ma master that shit, then it's a completely new field of technology. That's why Marcus Garvey wanted to start with ships and stuff like that. But a lot of a lot of the whole future can be based off of us living underwater or in water. It's a whole nother dimension, really. Yeah. Just based on the fact that we know nothing about it. And it's offensive to even say that we do. Why yeah. and why does why do we know so little about it? But the things that we do know about it is that one of the things that we do know about it is that the moon, like, that shit tides the oceans, the seas, the rivers for some reason. And it's also very, it's, tra it's tracked to females cycles, also, a lot of female cycles. And it's, it's based on our calendars. That's why we have months. It's months because moon, moon. And that's literally like, a lot of the things that we have on this planet is based on the moon. And the moon itself is connected to the water on this planet. Why is it only connected to the water? I mean, I know overall it's spinning around. I mean, it's here and it's connected to not just the water, all the energy of the planet. But why is the water able to adapt so well to a planet, all the a energy source all the way in outer space? Or are we looking at this completely wrong, you feel me? Is it the fact that the, the planet is actually shifting or moving over? And that's why the fucking water source is going down because it's going somewhere else on the planet. And the perspective from where we're at, it might be a full moon. But since the planet is actually spinning in the fucking ocean, it's on another side. Most of the water is on the other side then it might appear to us that it's connected. What do you think? Honestly, like you said, it makes a lot of sense. Cause like you said, it's a, like the earth is just a ball, bro. It's not gonna stay still. It's gonna just move continuously. So instead of just, but, also, the planet is what made of mostly water. And then the moon, being 
that is that is not really that far from it if you actually think about it since you just pick it up and move it. But still I think what I think your theory is, makes more sense. It's more plausible. So what I wanna get to That's why more like hurricanes, tsunamis, shit like that happens. So what I want to get to right now is the main basis of the conclusion of this video, I guess, which is Which is really like crazy. So, what we have here, from what we can perceive, if we stop believing in all the uh, fantasies that science has taught us and religion, and from what we can truly see as plant, uh, as humans, we can look up at the sky, right? And we know that up is just like it is below, right? But when you say below, then you have to realize that below is not land. You feel me? Below is actually in the ocean. So I want to give you a, a depiction of what I mean. So up here you have space. When you look up at the sky, you can see the stars. You can see what's going on out there. But in reality, this is the same thing as the ocean. Okay? You can go in the ocean, and you can go in space, too. You can be on land, and you can be in the atmosphere, which is just what? Basically, in between land and space, there's the atmosphere, which is basically an illusion. Which, the atmosphere is actually you entering space. Just like the, uh, the surface of the ocean and what we see in the ocean is just like what we see when we enter space. I mean, when we see with ocean. The ocean is actually the entrance to the core of the fucking universe. Which is the center. That's why it's the core. So when you're looking up, when you're on land, right? What you really have is the core, which is what they tell you is below. And you have space, which is they tell you is above. So... What you know, what you know now from this video is that the core of the Earth is not really the core of the Earth is not rock; it's actually fire. And on top of this fire, you have a lot of fucking water, and as a result of that, you have the land. And then on top of that, you have space, which is on top of the fucking land, literally. You see the space, I mean, the shapes that we, we could say this is a dome or whatever, but that's in a, a dome and a shape. These are all illusions. They're symbols that we made up for the shit that I'm telling you right now, which is that on top of you is nothing but an infinite sheet of water in a way, a, a substance and an energy that is very compatible to water. You're going to enter the truth, which is the core. When you enter space, you're going to end up right back here at the core. It's a, tr you see, it's a never ending cycle, really. As your human, as your human mind can understand, you see, if you go deep enough in the ocean, you'll see nothing but darkness. And then every now and again, you will see these creatures that can glow and glow in the dark and make their own lights. And then around them, like you have, I mean, okay, for example, you have a volcano in the darkness of the ocean, in the, in the bottom of the ocean. What they tell you is it's the bottom. You see a volcano coming out of this, and it's erupting what? Fire. It's erupting what? Gases. Sulfurs. Phosphorus. Like a lot of fucking chemicals. And around that, you have animals. And a lot of the animals in the ocean use these chemicals to actually survive and live and thrive. So what you have to realize is that actually the surface, the, the barrier between the ocean and the fire, which is the earth, it's only there because the water is there. If not, it would just be that fire bursting up out of nowhere. It went every day, all day. 
So what you have to understand also is that when you go into space, you see nothing but darkness. And then you see what they tell you is the stars and uh, planets and shit like that. And what that can be con compared to is actually the same thing, volcanoes, which is just a lot of energy is erupting from this planet. The sun every day is, is in your sky and it's beaming you just like that volcano is and you're living around that. On land right now, but you can also live inside of the space or the atmosphere, which is the gateway between space, which is the core, which is at the bottom. What they tell you is the bottom. Do you feel like, am I explaining this good enough, bro? Yeah, bro. I, I understand what you're saying, bro. Basically, you're saying that this is the ocean. Yeah. At the bottom of the ocean is not the core, it's more so space. Space. Just continuing space. Just like when the when there's land, it's clouds, and above the clouds is space. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. I just bubbled a little. And what I'm saying is, the ocean is actually what? Like space. It's, it's space, but what I'm trying to get you to see is that the ocean, the ocean is actually a gateway, all, just like the atmosphere is. You see, what the ocean actually is, is what we can live inside of to experience space. But outside of living inside of these three things, we cannot experience the core of the earth, or can, nor, neither can we experience true space. Because these things are both... The, the same thing, basically. It's a loop. You enter there, you're entering the actual core of the fucking earth. Or what we say is the earth, yeah. which is the universe, or I guess. You just keep going out. So, I don't know if I can explain it any better. If not, somebody can email me or fucking just put a comment on the box below. But to give one more depiction, and then I'm just going to put this shit to sleep with the whole ocean thing for today. And the one last thing is that, let me see what I do with the pen. With you being right here, Okay, you're okay. Let me get let me do this better now. Okay, let me drop ball. Okay, now that I have a ball right here, let's say that this is the earth, these this circle, and you see that space is above, and you have the core right here. Now, you're right here where human where it says humans are, but I just circled. With you being right here and not having the intelligence or what they have, the quote-unquote technology, or basically the way that uh, fishes have, alligators can live on Earth and the ocean at the same time just because they have naturally grown this or evolved to do this, I guess. But it's really technology. You don't have the evolution or the technology to be in the atmosphere right now, from what they tell you, based on your limited mind state and your knowledge. Neither do you have most of the freedom and knowledge to be in the ocean, which is actually the spiritual realms that you can actually be in. While you're living on this land right here, you are only, you're kind of trapped. Like, you won't truly even be able to reincarnate. You'll just be stuck in the fucking... You'll be stuck. I don't know how to say it. They put your ass in a fucking box and then stick your ass in the dirt, nigga. Make you a houseplant. See, in the dirt itself is what? I mean, it's a result of what? Fire and water. They stick you in that shit. And if you was in the ocean, let's say if you was in the ocean. Or if you were in the atmosphere even. You see, 
Let's see, what's an example? Birds, I guess, are an example. Birds are an example because they live at a higher atmosphere. Any really flying, any flying object or a being, they live in a higher atmosphere. You see, so most of the day when they're just flying and they looking down and everything, they aren't doing this for food. They're doing this for a purpose in the same way that, I mean, they're not doing this for, for a purpose really, but it's more so they're doing what the fuck they do. And their purpose is to observe what's going on below them. Our ancestors realized this. With this knowledge of flying, why are you observing what's going on below you? Why don't you fly off into outer space? And the question, that's a great question. Because with this knowledge, you're not supposed to really fly off into outer space. The actual basis of energy is at the center of the fucking earth. And that's where outer space is really going to leave you. To the center of the earth. But it's easier to do that. By going to the middle and the heart of where we are now, which is in the water, because it's actually closer to it. What you're trying to go to, what you're trying to go to the atmosphere and out of space, you would have to literally completely evolve millions and billions of years. Or you can just literally reverse your fucking evolution, what they call evolution, which is your technology that you use to travel on this fucking plane which is the earth plane and the airplane, you literally can just reverse that shit and go back to fire and water. And still have the same consciousness, still have the same knowledge, still have the same emotions, still have the same experiences. On a higher level, of course. I don't believe in a flat earth. I don't believe in like a globe. I don't believe in none of that shit really. Because we don't know what the fuck is, e we don't even know what the fuck is going on in our everyday local communities. So who's to say the perspective of everybody giving us the knowledge about their overall grand theosis of the perspective of how the earth looks from outer space is stupid. That doesn't determine what the actual shit is. If I wanted to ask you a question, do I uh, look on top of you and then say, oh, that's it? No, I have to literally go inside of you. If I want to go inside of you, how do I do that? Do I cut you open and say, ah, now I know what this shit is. No, I wanna know what the fuck is going on. I just look at nothing but random ass body parts. And I just be like, what the fuck? It's not doing the same thing it was doing before. So you have to, I have to ask you questions, I have to understand you, I have to be able to communicate with you. Right? right true. And you cannot communicate with something if you're above it. There's no reason, there's nothing you can learn from being above it, really. You have to learn it from what's on the inside of it. And the surface of it really doesn't even know what's going on on the inside of it. It's only there for you to see and feel and touch and experience and sense. But the shit that's actually going on the inside of it is so busy doing what it's doing... That it has no, it has no need or want or desire to sense things. So With that being said, I hope you learned something today.
educating